Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Mike. It is March 22nd, 2020, and uh, you know, this is the latest update. Um, let me switch to that. There we go. Um, <laughs> welcome to Wonderworld. Um, so this is going to be what I think is a very important video. I'm going to go and really get into what appears to be happening. Um, I've been, um, I've been kind of like sitting on the fence, watching really, really, really closely everything which was unfolding and taking everything in. Um, and I think I'm finally at a, at a place where, um, the narrative makes sense. So I'm going to walk you through it. Um, I'm going to walk you through it, not just so you can understand it, but then also you can have an understanding of how other people are experiencing it. Like, you know, if you're watching this, you're, you're in a small percentage, you're in a, a small enough percentage to have an open mind. You know, maybe I'm wrong. I could be totally wrong. That's, that's, that's completely a possibility, but I'm going to explain to you my logic. And, um, for the most part, I think this is going to be an accurate, um, uh, uh, an accurate description as to the situation at hand, um, why it's working, what's going on, what the agenda is, and then also some, some possibilities of, um, of how to navigate this. Um, because I think that's what, ma that's what really matters right about now is like, what do I do? Like, you know, uh, first of all, I want to say this, um, this is my personal opinion, but my experience has shown this to be very true is wherever you are right now, whatever you have access to, that's all you need to navigate this. You know, if you've been prepping for 12 years and you bugged out like three weeks ago and like, you know, you're, you're set, well, you're set in a certain way, but you're going to be distant in another way. And so you're going to have still be in a situation which you have not, um, prepared or predicted. And likewise, you know, if <laughs> you haven't done nothing, but at least you're, you're kind of open-minded, you know, whatever you got is what you got. Um, like I almost look at this is, um, you know, you're, you're a space traveler. Maybe you're like special forces and you're, you're, you, you just have come to wherever you're, um, uh, you're supposed to go, the environment you're supposed to go to, and all you got is the clothes on your back, and you're figuring out that, figuring it out as you go. So, um, you know, with that being said, let's jump right into this. Uh, first thing is we got to realize that um, mushroom management, uh, that is how most of humanity, you know, all of humanity has been um, handled. And that includes all of us. Like as much as we think we know, we have to all, always like check ourselves to blind spots. So let me define mushroom management. Mushroom management is like uh, when um, you manage you manage human beings. You manage uh, <laughs> a, a, human beings. Yeah, I guess that's the best way. Um, I must be a mushroom. Uh, they keep me in the dark and they feed me bullshit. That's what mushroom management is, is it's like keeping it in the dark and the shit which they do tell you is just bullshit. And so we have to take that in consideration. Like, you know, everything which we hold to be accurate and true as description of how things work, they might not just be. And so part of this long-term, um, this long-term like mushroom management program over over culture has, um, you know, it's, it's affected everyone and how deep it goes. We're still, we're still kind of figuring out. Um, but I like the mushroom management as a, a metaphor because what mushrooms are in a forest, um, like a forest, each forest is a living entity, like, you know, maybe different than a human being, but it's alive and it communicates. And there's this, there's a feedback loop. And really the brains of that forest, of the ecosystem, is the network of, of roots from mushrooms. And I read this once, I tried to find this, this quote, but it was, but I think I, I, it was, 
the only thing more complex on, on earth than the structure of the human brain is this, this mushroom lattice, which we find, uh, in all of our, our kind of natural wooded areas. Um, and I love this plants talk to each other using the internet, the internet of fungus, you know, that's a play on the internet of things. Part of really being able to navigate this situation is recognizing that we live in an inverted culture. And what that means is whatever we see in culture is an inversion of a truth. You know, not everything is inverted and how you would know is by going to the, um, the root, the very beginning. And if you see if the beginning is founded in something which is very, very like, um, inhumane or out of harmony with our environment, well then, you know, it's inverted, but, um, uh, let's go on, um, let's go on into our presentation. So, okay. Uh, is this where I want to begin? Um, yeah. So the first thing we want to say is, um, you know, coronaviruses are real. Um, like there's a real thing like viruses and, and the coronavirus in particularly, you know, it's, it's, it's very common. Um, uh, you know, I don't know, very common. It's common within, within our world and, and it's all over the place. But we, uh, <laughs> we also remember we're talking about this. You, you keep them in the dark and you feed them shit. And I'm going to suggest that, uh, you know, a lot of things which we take, which we take for natural truth, such as germ theory is like, this is part of the bullshit. You know, maybe not all of it, maybe just part of it, but it's, it's, um, you know, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a, I'm not a research scientist. I'm not a virologist, but I know enough, like, you know, to know that one, like anything, which is just assumed to be, we all take as truth, you know, you should always question. But then if you go and you look into some of the analysis, and I would really, really suggest everyone doing that is that, um, you know, the, what we think of as germ, th this germ theory and like how germs happen and viruses, like that ain't exactly an accurate description of the way things work. So going back to the coronaviruses, like, yeah, they're viruses, but from, from the best of my understanding, what, what a virus is, is it's like a, it's excrement from your cells. When your cells are sick, when your cells are toxic, they are producing viruses. All the viruses that you find, they come from within, unless they're being injected. That's a way which, which, which the viruses come in, uh, live viruses can come into the human system. But what we do is when we are toxic, when we're sick, we produce viruses. It's not the other way around. And so there's this, um, this is part of like the keep them in the dark and the feeding them bullshit because what, um, well, well, let me go into here before we, we, we get into it. So it's like, there's this book, which, which came out, uh, at least the paperback just was released recently. It's called the invisible rainbow and it tells the history of electricity and life. And the author goes through and very, very clearly ties in this correlation to the electrification of our atmosphere, um, to pandemics and kind of what the idea is, is like, this is what's making us sick. And this, like, as we get more and more, uh, uh, electric, electrical, you know, um, pollution, um, it affects us. Uh, when I say us, like the human body, the human body, um, it, it, it responds, you know, the human body is, is, is very electrical. You know, you have a heart attack, you get that, you know, the thing on the, the chest, it's because we're electrical. And so there is this relationship, which we have with our environment. And when things like, like telegrams and satellites and radar and all these things have gone into our atmosphere, which were not there before the human family, the collection of all beings known as human beings, they responded by getting sick. And like different people have different levels of toxicity and sickness, you know, based upon a whole bunch of different things. But this book does an excellent job tying in pandemics, you know, going back like to the late 1800s, you know, way before like pandemics could be explained by people traveling by train and plane, maybe train, I think trains are around in the 1880s, but, um, 
it shows another model and we're beginning, you know, you take this in, in correspondence or, or in, in harmony with, with like maybe germ theory isn't really the right thing. And here we have this other model and it's talking about, um, it's, it's how this, this electrical, um, this electrical, uh, um, uh, introductions of new electrical mechanisms into our environment. We are, some of us get really sick and some of us die, some of us don't, and then we kind of like change and what have you. And like, you know, we adapt, uh, we become more toxic, but this happens with each iteration. And so, you know, what, where do we want to go? So it's, it's, there's been all these, there's been all the talk, you know, from the very beginning of, um, the coronavirus and is it linked to um, 5G? Now I was always interested in that. Like, you know, that kind of rang true to me, but but there was part of it was I was like, ah, I don't know, you know, I'm a little bit confused. Maybe this is, you know, there's always going to be red herrings, but, but I've been following 5G very, very closely for a long time. And um, so this was immediately hitting my hot buttons, like all of the stuff between like, uh, the city in China and like all of that being like one of the, the, the first places which started testing, um, uh, which started testing like, you know, the next generation of, of wireless networks. And then, you know, just to confirm this, I mean, this is what I, what, this is what we're seeing. So I'll take a step back. So what we're seeing is there is a true sickness, which is, which is happening. And this true sickness is a byproduct of this next generation of, of wireless technology of electrifying the environment, the atmosphere, which we live in, and then the human body's natural response. That is like the real illness. When you're seeing like doctors, like really, really freaked out saying, I've never seen anything like this. That's what they're talking about. And how we know that is, um, how we know that is, uh, you know, look right here. So uh, we talked about Wuhan. So the virus here is um, uh, the worst affected part of Italy is Lombard, the Lombardy region, the Lombardy region. They just announced stricter measures, all this sort of stuff. So what's the Lombardy region? Uh, the Lombardy region is where we find Milan. And so let's go back to July 10th, 2019 and how Vodafone um, Italy turned Milan into an extensive next generation test bed. Like, you know, we're seeing the same thing. It's right in front of you. You know, it's, 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 it's five, five G is complex. Um, it's very, very complex. Um, I don't think anyone knows how it works. Like everything which I've read, when you get to a really, really good expert, they will admit at some point, well, I'm not really certain how it works. And what happens is there are all of these different kind of like, um, strange things that are happening. One is you have these two different parts of the, the wireless spectrum, which are, um, somehow working together. They got like what they call the, the sub six. And then you've got like the, 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 um, I think it's the 24 to 26 gigahertz millimeter wave sort of thing. And I don't believe the sub six qualifies as millimeter waves, but it's the, but it's the millimeter waves is what we're interested in. And so when you read a lot of the articles that are debunking the correlation between, um, between, uh, uh, 5g and human ailment and i just read a whole bunch of them it's like usually there's a whole bunch of logical fallacies like name calling and appeal to authority and all that sort of stuff and then they're going to hit you with a little bit of like technology and you got to realize 5g is complex as fuck these people don't know what they're talking about and you know the experts don't and they're like kind of taking little pieces out of the puzzle and saying well they're focused on like the six this the six uh the sub six right here but that, that can't be true because 5G's benefit, 5G does a couple things. So it's like, it expands the, um, the, the amount of bandwidth, which can be, uh, shared between devices immensely, immensely, immensely. But it also does this thing where it makes the, the network work on the application level. And that's, you know, beyond my, my understanding of the technology. But what I do recognize is that's new, like prior to, to this, like that's changed. So we have all these changes. It's very, very, very complex. And when you see an article that like makes it sound simple, you know, you can't trust it. So, um, this is what we, uh, this is what we know. So, um, 
So we're seeing like all of this ailment which is happening, which I'm going to suggest is is the byproduct of of 5G. And there, there are two interesting things. So this this rain this invisible rainbow, this book, it talks about how specifically any type of like electricity, uh, electrification added into the environment has had adverse effects on the human being. But um, if you've done your, your, your 5G homework over the past couple of years, you're going to recognize that 5G like really, really is particularly harmful to the human being because of how resonant the frequency is in terms of um, uh, like the human body and how our cells relate. Like it's, it's in the same frequency band. Like if you've ever heard like, like try to listen to a radio station and and like uh, the old fashioned ones with the, the dials and sometimes you're picking up something else and there's a bleed over. So that's what happens. We've got a certain frequency which our human body, like our cells would communicate to one another. And then we're rolling out this other network which is like sometimes touching that. Like there's gonna be bleed over, there's gonna be interference. Like we don't know what's gonna happen to each individual but it's going to affect the system. But even more so, like, and, and that's how I kind of understood it. But as, as I looked further into like what's going on right now, what really seems to be the thing which, which people are being affected by and how you can identify like what the real illness is, because we're going to talk about the, the fake illness in a moment, is this real illness seems to really be affecting people on the, um, the oxygen level, like people who are, um, not breathing people who are like when you see the pictures in china like someone like just like falling over it's like you know they're fainting they're not getting enough oxygen you're seeing people with these coughs these bad coughs these pneumonia like coughs but they're dry coughs that's the sign they don't there's no fluid in in the in the lungs this is why the um this is why scientists are are, are like confused by this because it the when they're they're looking at the coronavirus because they've been told that this is coronavirus and they're looking at it relative to other coronaviruses because coronavirus does indicate a human ailment you know you know there really is sickness but there's something different that's happening now and the thing that's different that's happening is the 5g and so what we see right here is the 60 gigahertz portion of um of 5g so again 5g like is working on all these different kind of like like parts of the spectrum. So I think 5G goes from like 24 to 60 gigahertz and then uh, maybe sub six, maybe I'm kind of close, but it's something like that. And it scans and it, it works different parts. The millimeter is the, uh, the millimeter waves are the, are the larger, are the higher numbers. So what's interesting or what, what's significant is at 60 gigahertz specifically, at 60 gigahertz specifically, 90% of the energy. So imagine there's like this, like this energy is um, being sent out of a signal. Like it's like a, a, when you push a, um, when, when, when you have a, a uh, let's say, a, um, I'm thinking of um, the red dots, the, the laser pointers, like um, the laser pointer before you depress your finger, there's no signal coming out or no energy coming out of it. And then as soon as you depress your finger, that red beam comes out. So that's the energy. So 5G, when it hits this, this um, in a particular area, because we can also, we also want to talk about some of the limitations of, of 5G, but when it gets to the 60 gigahertz um, uh, frequency, 60 gigahertz at that particular frequency, oxygen, the molecule oxygen absorbs 98% of this energy. I'm not exactly certain what that means when it says absorbs 98%. Does that mean like there's no other, uh, 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 it absorbs all of the, the, the 5G energy or does it have a capability of taking in 98%? That I'm not certain. But the way which it affects what it what it does to oxygen so when we we've got like oxygen the element and then we have oxygen what we breathe and that's a molecule that's the o2 the um there are these two these two um oxygen molecules that come together and they're held together by electrons and so when the oxygen molecules are just naturally when they're in this 60 gigahertz um uh uh 
window of like, you know, energy being zapped out at, at 60 gigahertz, it just naturally picks it up because that's the natural uh, uh, frequency which it resonates and it's absorbed by the electrons. And what happens is these electrons start spinning really, really fast. And I'm not a chemist, but from what I gather is like when it spins fast, like things get all screwy. It doesn't normally spin fast. And one of the things which happens is like we can take in that oxygen, but... Um, like the hemoglobin, I think it's a hemoglobin, like, you know, part of our, like, you know, the detailed stuff of our blood, which like is able to, to take from, from what's absorbed in our, our lungs into our blood. Like it's not taking it up. Like it's your breathing, but somehow that blood, that, that oxygen is not getting into your blood. And so this is what people are having the shortness of breath. And this is what like the coughing, and this is where it's all coming from. So when you're seeing that, when you're seeing that, you're seeing the real deal. You're seeing the real deal. Like this is a side effect of, of this, this new electrification. Um, and, and that's how we can, we can separate it from this because this is where it's getting really, really complex. And this is where it's like, you know, it's Machiavellian trickery to like the highest degree. So what's happened is we've all been conditioned for easily the last uh, 80 years, um, maybe longer of germ theory being like the way it's presented is being the accurate way of, um, of, how me of how medicine works, of how immunity works and like all this sort of stuff. And again, there's, there's some truth to it, but some of it has been, you know, it's not. And remember, if you've seen like the video, which I did about, um, uh, the, the creating of the medical mind, I go into saying, showing how this entire medical system, like not only what we teach, but how we teach our doctors, this all like, it was all designed by the Rockefellers and the Flexner brothers. So definitely go look at that stuff. But this is why we don't, why like germ theory is taught the way it is taught. And so we all understand viruses not to be, you know, uh, signs of being sick inside, but we see it in this other way. So we, we are conditioned to think like virus. And if you have viruses, well, you're sick. Um, well, the body's always producing viruses and it's, it's a sign of, of like our, our immune system doing the correct thing. We should be releasing viruses. So, and coronavirus is like a virus we do release. And there are some people like you can, when you have a lot of the coronavirus, like, yeah, you can have flu-like symptoms. The, the virus is an indication of like your body having too much of like, you know, toxicity inside and it's going into like overdrive in order to kind of like eliminate and get rid of all of the stuff. So yeah, if we're starting to test for coronavirus uh, and look for virus because we believe this is what's causing everything, you're going to go find it. And as you begin testing more and more and more people, you're going to go and see more and more people got these viruses because that's the way it works. I mean, that's the truth of it. It doesn't mean they're sick. This is why we're seeing all of this like, you know, non-systematic uh, or un... I forget even how they're describing it, but they're saying like, you know, they're not showing any sickness, but guess what? You've got it and now you're sick and the numbers are going up. And the reason why this is important is because we're not really seeing that many sick people here in the United States. Um, we're seeing sick people who might have the flu or have other things which are uh, um, because they, they are toxic, um, really having pneumonia. But... Um, but I mean, the way the human being works is like, uh, one, we're highly suggestible. Uh, we're, we're, uh, let's just go with that. We're highly suggestible. Let's go back to restless leg syndrome. If you remember this, like there was this huge thing. When, when were all these articles written? I don't have a date on them, but like, uh, I wouldn't say it was like 10 years ago, how um, restless leg syndrome, like out of nowhere, like just hit mainstream television and like two companies, uh, GlaxoSmithKline, I don't know who the other farm pharma company was, but they came up with drugs for um, restless leg syndrome. They started advertising all over the place. And then there was this huge, this huge uptick in restless t of people with restless leg syndrome. And then um, when they stopped the commercials, it all went away. And like, you know, it says right here, when, when, drug, dry, when drug giants GlaxoSmithKline 
launched a new medicine for restless leg syndrome last year, few people had heard of the affliction, and some physicians were skeptical that it even existed. Today, the drug Requip is on track to post sales of $500 million this year, making it one of the fastest-growing drugs in Glaxo's portfolio. Like This is demonstration that when you see enough information, you see enough commercials, and particularly as it relates to like our health, because this is where we're the most vulnerable. Like people are afraid of getting sick. Like, you know, you're going to internalize it. You're going to see it. You're going to all this sort of stuff. And so we're getting nonstop uh, coronavirus. We got to get the test. We got to get the test. The more tests you're going to go and see, they're going to go and, um, and verify the numbers are coming up. The numbers are coming up, but the people really aren't that sick right now. What you're seeing right now is is probably like this this placebo effect this like you know someone uh uh just being hyped up something which maybe not normally would 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 be handled in in these extreme sort of ways and you know it's this perfect storm where we're seeing all of these 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 kind of flu-like symptoms and the test numbers are going up and it feels very very real um because this is what we've been taught to look for and no one is like, you know, it's really been debunked this 5G thing. Now, 5G rollout in the United States, I'm not really, you know, I don't know to what degree it has happened, but I'm pretty certain we're, we're, we're behind the likes of both um, <coughs> Italy and China. And so we're not really seeing it yet. And so what... Um, what I'm imagining is happening, like, so uh, I was out doing some essential uh, errands and I drove by a variety of emergency rooms, both in hospitals and as urgent cares. And, and this was just yesterday and there was nothing. There was no, nothing going on. There's no overloaded emergency rooms. Like people aren't checking in, people aren't sick. I mean, I see a lot of people that are scared. I see a lot, actually, I see a lot of people coming out now. Like, it's kind of like that fear is kind of shaken off. And it's at the same time here in Pennsylvania where it's really being pushed. Like, on Monday, they're going to begin enforcing all of the, uh, um, the critical businesses. But um, we're going to get into that in a moment, like, you know, what this is all about. But um, what I imagine is going to happen is uh, there's this, there's, there's a feedback loop which is going on. So everybody is everybody is home. Um, everybody is home, and um, and you know maybe they're streaming more than they normally are. I mean, I'm just assuming everyone's doing that at work anyway. But um, you know, everyone being quarantined is really adding for people to increase internet um, speeds, which is speeding up like the need for 5G because it's been sold for so long as being like a really, really great way of getting faster internet. And even in China, like, you know, the, the manufacturers of, of the, the technology, they were putting it into the hospitals, which were being used. Um, the, the dangerous stuff can only be used primarily like in indoors because it can't go through a building. So maybe it would be like out for outdoor connectivity um, for people who are outside, but a lot of it's gonna be inside because the millimeter waves are so um, fragile, they can't go through like thick walls or anything like that. So there's this interesting thing of like, oh, now we need 5G and we're gonna put it because we all need more internet and everything is being pushed, pushed to, um, to, uh, um, it's being pushed to drive, you know, what's really going to cause some ailments. So what I'm going to, what I think is going to happen or is we're going to begin to see like maybe, uh, yeah, these test numbers are showing like a lot of growth, but we're not necessarily seeing really, really sick people. Um, I don't know how, it, it seems like, um, like, you know, you look at these articles right here, this one, um, was talking about uh, Italy, and this was in July. I'm pretty certain in China it was um, November is when I read, like, you know, it went live. So there's a little bit of a, um, you know, a lag. I'm not, as I said, like, I'm not really certain um, about the markets here in the United States, but my guess is as the 5G is rolled out, that's when we're going to start seeing, and maybe there's like a two month lag or a three month lag. I don't know. But at some point, then we're going to start to see these really, 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 um, 
these really um, uh, intense responses, which which are probably like have a lot to do with not being able to breathe and we've not seen this before not being able to uptake the oxygen they're breathing but they're not they're not able to internalize the oxygen um so what 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 we need to be doing is preparing you know protecting ourselves from from 5g and and not necessarily protecting ourselves from um from perhaps uh uh inaccurate uh, models of immunity. Um, so what what is happening? Why is this do it? Why, why is this going on? So this is like this is like a real a real slick move because it's like introducing it's introducing this this toxic technology at the same time giving like a red herring or a cover story for it and everyone's in pandemonium. So there are when they talk about the end game, I think a much a much better term is like it's not the end game this is a transition what's being happening is there's a sleight of hand move which is happening and um what is occurring during this period is there is a controlled demolition of certain aspects of society and new ones are being introduced quickly and this is how it's happening and we're seeing it through legislation and like the staying at home and all that sort of stuff so this is what we're specifically like the most obvious what this is going to be about um, uh, all of this is going, um, to be, you know, we are already hearing it. Like, where's the vaccine? Where's the vaccine? Where's the vaccine? You know, if you read about, um, PrEP, I think that's the name of the legislation. Like, you know, all vaccine manufacturers for anything in these, these periods of, of medical martial law, uh, they have total immunity. Like, you know, things are being fast, um, are being fast tracked. All of these vaccines are being rolled out and, what it seems like, uh, and if you're a normal thinker and if you're, you're, you're like, okay, like this makes sense. And like, this has to be serious. The world governments, like they wouldn't all come together and agree simultaneously that we should lock down all of our citizens unless this was really serious. Um, you know, maybe some people were, were, are in on what's actually happening. Maybe some people aren't, you know, that's, that, that I, that's neither here nor there what's happening. But leading up to this, we see in October, we see in September, there was all of this talk, this ID 2020, which is this link of a digital ID with vaccines. And so the technology is in existence right now, like the, the roll out scalable technology of these two new types of vaccines, which don't just act as a vaccine, but there's a digital identification with each person who has it. And now there is a very, very strong reason to, um, to uh for everyone to have it i mean this is a freaking no-brainer like i mean they're saying it right here they're like immunization an entry point for digital entry we're going to take everyone away we're going to lock them up we're like okay okay we're uh and probably what we're going to see is a lot of the the ailments are going to start to slow down here what does seem to happen is with the introduction of these new um technologies is we reach a point of equilibrium where like yeah a lot of people died but on the collective level we found a way of we're more toxic but we're not um you know it's we we've we've learned how to deal with it and maybe 5g that's going to be longer maybe it's going to be more intense um you know, there's some very valid points that all this is lining up exactly with the 40th rollout of the of the Georgia Guidestones, which, um, you know, my research shows that that lines up with Three Mile Island, which 40 years was last year, which correspond with the burning of 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 um, of of the cathedral of Notre Dame. I mean, there's a lot of the synchromistic there, but I want to not go into the synchromistic so much right now and really focus on on like the more tangible, the easier things. But, but yeah, this is, this is the perfect application of, of, okay, you're ready to come back into the world. And like, you know, there, there, things seem to be settling down and we can reopen up the airlines and we can start to gather with more than a hundred people and so forth, but you have to have your vaccine. You know, if you don't want your vaccine, well then, you know what, well, that's fine, but you're not going to be able to do this other stuff because as we've seen, like, you know, this was a horrible pandemic. Uh, and probably we will see a lot of people, um, a lot of people die from the from the from the byproducts of um, of of this new technology. Um, you know, maybe those death like 
this is where it's so tricky is because like the people who are doubtful of like those death rates they're thinking about as it relates to the coronavirus is the way it's been told and like SARS and all that other stuff and they're rolling their heads but they're not thinking about this I'm like well no this is like a really really big change in terms of like how the energy which has been an electricity the type of electricity which has been in our atmosphere and so those numbers those numbers may be like legit legitimately like really really big you know the spanish flu a lot of these pandemics are 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 tied into major um major changes or upgrades in electricity and so that may be a truth and so this vaccine is going to act as a nice cover um and people are going to be like, I want my life back. And so this is going to be a way this is, this is, you know, it's, it's perfect. And we even got, you know, uh, right here, this is Bill Gates. If you've been doing your history or been reading your, your doing the research and you know about like the, um, the, the trials that were run and, and that were run in October, which were connected to the Gates foundation. And we know about like, you know, who owns different patents and all this sort of stuff. I'm like, it's obvious, like, you know, all of the signs are there, both like, again, synchronistically. And we also see the signs are there in this very kind of like tangible, like real world, like this is how you make things happen. So, um, that's that's definitely part of what's occurring is to get everyone digitized and to one national id and database and all that sort of stuff but then at the same time you know this is where the like this is just one example of what what else what um the destruction the controlled demolition of other um of other industries and um and the reintroduction of new ones like the sleight of hand and so what we're seeing is is no one no one can work um you know it's probably going to last as long the lockdown until like you know uh, whatever the critical mass is for the number of people who can no longer afford to pay their mortgage their rent um there's gonna you know money's free now the fed's down to zero percent um for their 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 discount rate um and what's happening is this the the stage is being set for like you know uh no longer getting th they're going to drastically reduce the amount of things which you can get you know like all of the frivolous stuff which people used to buy it's probably going to go away, which isn't a bad thing, right? You know, there's a lot of junk which we're buying. You know, we are addicted to that. But this is how that moves away. And, and you're going to see, like, you know, things that are essential. Like, the essential are the things which the next iteration of what life or what the user experience is going to be. Like, that's going to be available. And my sense is, I think, for the most part, like... Uh, um, they're going to want to keep so uh, enough supply chains open that people can eat and live... And, um, so it's not as bad as like the famines everyone knows from history. And so like, there's always that like, oh, well, this wasn't as bad as this. This wasn't as bad as that. Like, you know, that's how it's going to be managed. And everyone's going to eventually be broke and all the jobs are going away. Like, you know, if you're doing, uh, if you're not part of whatever this, what, what can work under the, the lockdown, um, you know, your jobs are going to go away. Things are going to change. Everything's going to become more and more internet focused, more and more digital. This is at the same time, 5G opens up the bandwidth, you know, all of these industries, like it's, it's the perfect storm. And probably you're going to see this introduction of the basic, uh, universal basic income. So you're seeing the introduction of all of these, what we think of as like communist or really state state intensive services are going to be offered like everyone's going to have they're probably going to stay in their houses or maybe they'll be downgraded i don't know but for a little bit of time like you know people are going to feel like safe they're being given money from the from the government and they're they're they can't get kicked out of their house and like some of the food and like if you prepped well you're probably going to go and and um and be able to uh um you know, have some sort of like luxuries, just like what you think about like the, like uh, Soviet era Russia, like, you know, how, how precious chocolate would be or something like that. You know, maybe that's what it's going to be like, maybe a little bit better, but, but it's always got to be a little bit better because if it was too bad, people would probably riot. I mean, this is my guess. 
Um, and then with all of the drone technology, you know, that's going to, you know, it's, it's probably going to be smoother, particularly for people who do not, who are going to go along and get along with it. This is how the shift is happening. This is how the shift occurs. And then, so we're seeing all this call for the universal um, income. We need universal income at the same time, like, you know, paper money. We got to get away with from paper money. You know, all of this is going to happen. So you're going to see the whole financial system most likely change drastically. And this is how something like this can happen. Uh, maybe it's all going to implode also, like, you know, all of the trillions of dollars which are are going in, uh, which are being released by by the Fed, uh, most of that money just makes its way to the stock market. You know, it goes first to the banks, and the banks are going to go invest, and you're going to see the stock market go up. I mean, that's usually how it works before like the inflation really hits. But you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Uh, there's going to be a change. It'll probably explode the way in which it used to be. But then you know, this is how the shift occurs. Um, so the question is like, oh, well, you know, that's a lot of fun. You know, what am I going to do that? Yeah. I want, so let me go back to, to this, this, this original, I said like, you know, the, this is a great analogy because of the mushrooms and, you know, we may be managed, humanity may be managed by this mushroom management. But at the same time, mushrooms are unbelievably spectacular and they're connected and they create things which are beyond what we, which most people are able to appreciate or comprehend. So let's, let's see what, what, let's, this is the diabolical part. So, but this fits in, uh, as we become aware of this, we also are going to be identifying the solution. And that's what I mean by the mushroom stuff. So we see that everything, all of the solutions to all of, uh, you know, problem, reaction, solution, Hegelian dialect, um, thesis, antithe, antithes, anti, antithes, why can't I say that? I don't know. Anti, antithes. That word is stuck in my head. Uh, thesis, synthesis, um, and the word which will not come out. And... That works on so many levels. And so this is a real assault on humanity. So like a big part of this, I mean, we could get into like some of the very diabolical, because this is diabolical and this is very, very anti-human. And I want to talk about that maybe in other, in other um, videos of, of specifically like how this corresponds to timelines, what timelines are and all that other stuff. But, but this, is, this is diabolical. Um, it is, it is attacking the human being in our blind spots. Like, you know, people have been, have been manipulated into thinking one way for a very long time and they have blind spots and they're constantly being abused for these blind spots. And so one of the recommendations of what were, um, antithesis, <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. Uh, one of the one of the uh, um, one of the the recommendations of what we want to do. So this is what they're, they're telling us: you want to self quarantine, you want to stay at home and social distancing. And so this is what's diabolical. So on a on a basic level, like keeping a human away from other humans um, is the worst thing we can do to one another. Um, in prisons, like that's the ultimate punishment is solitary confinement. In closed societies, like the Amish, if you're shunned, if you're kicked out of any sort of tribe, like that's the worst thing. Like both like physically, you're on your own, you know, you're, we're not, we're not all in this together. We're not going to take care of you. And then also like just the loneliness. Um, there's a time where being apart is very, very important, but large, large times is not good for us. And so, um, so for the majority of people, for the majority of time, like being self-isolated is like very, very inhumane. We know that, but now we want to drill this down even more specifically. So it's, um, it's, we don't, we have to have our six feet of social distancing. And, um, so I want to take a step back. So human beings, the human nature, the nature of being human is to be a social creature. I mean, there are exceptions to rules, but this is our primary nature is to be social, to be life affirming. 
The human being is life affirming. We do not naturally kill our own. We have to be conditioned to do so. And we naturally want to forgive and care for each other. That is the truth of who we are. And so when we are sick, when we are sick, um, and the sickness which is on us right now, so the emotional, the intellectual, and the physical sickness which is being thrusted on the human family right now is intense. It's been building, like we've been sick for a long time, but now it's getting really, really, really wild. And so the one thing which we need when we're sick is we need human care, we need human touch. You know, when you see these like people in the bubble and people with the bubble mask on their heads, that is the most inhumane thing in the world. We already go and do the research. Don't take my word, but it, but don't, germs are not your friggin' enemy. <laughs> you know, at that time, they need touch and care. So this social distancing both is psychologically the worst thing we need to do emotionally and healing wise. We need to be around each other. And so the six feet one is particularly diabolical. So if you're familiar with, um, with like the Heart Math Institute and they get all into like really studying from a scientific perspective, the electromagnetic field, which is produced by the heart. Remember we are elect, we are electric beings. We know that for fact, because when someone's heart stops beating, you can shock them and that MF could come back to life. You know, we're electrical beings. We also know wherever there's an electrical current, there's a magnetic field. You can't have one without the other. That's just basic physics. And so, you know, the Heart Math Institute really measures that sort of stuff. And like, you know, they get all into it. And so, and then they get into like, you know, compassion and like all of these, these, these psychophysiological connections between like our heart and being near each other and the rhythms of our hearts and controlling our hearts and how that affects everything from our emotional well-being, our physical well-being and all this sort of stuff. And so, um, you know, from all of their, their research, what they show is they're talking about right here, um, uh, the heart's electrical field is measured 60 times greater in amplitude than the electrical activity generated by the brain. This field measured in the form of an EKG, an ECG can be detected anywhere on the surface of the body. Furthermore, the magnetic field produced by the heart is 100 times greater in strength than the field generated by the brain and can be, talking about the heart field, detected up to three feet away. So you see this right here, we've got like this greater field, but this is our really big strong field right here. This one is three feet away. We cannot be within six feet of one another. So our electromagnetic fields, our heart fields, our most, you know, they talk about herd, um, herd immunity. So remember, everything, our culture is in inverse reality. So that means like whatever we see, which is, inverse it is based upon the truth and the 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 herd immunity uh which is talked about within um within vaccine circles we know is not true how do we know that because when you see like these these outbreaks of of, of measles in like 100 percent cat uh, uh uh vaccinated communities it's like yo your, your herd immunity didn't work you know that's always the pressure like it's like herd immunity, herd immunity. So that's the pressure to use people who do not want to put a vaccine in their body, why they need to do it. That is the show, the social shaming and the guilt. But there is a truth about, uh, about herd immunity. And what it's talking about is there's a certain strength that happens when people are, are close together. And in particular, when their electromagnetic fields are in resonance with one another. And there's a strength that happens, you know, it's uh, going back to 9-11, like, you know, whatever, regardless of what 9-11 was, what we did see afterwards was a coming together, which, which the people of the United States had not seen for a very, very long time. There was, there was this, you know, that's what, that's what tragedy can do. It can bring people together in a way. And this is definitely 9-11. Um, you know, we, we know that, uh, synchronistically by the, by the 19, 
by the 19, 19 hijackers, COVID-19, 19 years apart. But this is resonant to that. We're watching a controlled demolition. We're watching it in slow-mo versus quick, but it's the same sort of thing. But this time we're being denied this human interaction. And because we are, we are, we are being forced to move away from our humanity into becoming these more and more digital, more and more robotic. So I've been talking for 49 minutes right now. Uh, I want to go and in these last 10 minutes talk a little bit about like, you know, um, I'm going to talk about what I'm doing. You know, you take that for, for whatever that's worth. You know, I'm not a doctor. I don't know nothing, but, but this is what makes sense to me. Um, you know, the biomagnetic communication between people, um, you know, that's real. If you pay attention, if you care about like, about communication and relationships and, and you're sensitive, you're going to know that there is, there is something true and palpable between like fields within people. And so, you know, this all again from the heart math stuff, uh, website, um, the psychophysiological information can be encoded into the electromagnetic fields by people, uh, produced by the heart. And, you know, when we're around each other, we're picking that sort of stuff up. Um, all of this field stuff, this is, you know, we're bumping up against, you know, what we normally think of is, as uh, energy work. And, and regardless of what type of energy you do, um, I'm going to suggest that is um, an important thing to do. Uh, and here's why, like, it's always important. Um, but when we're working with, with, with energy, the imagination, the imagination is, is invoked. And so imagination has been kind of like, you know, it's, it's talked about in our culture, um, it's kind of like child's play, like, oh, you're imaginative. And, you know, like, it's like this thing, like, you know, you come up with good storylines or no, that's not what imagination is. So imagination is, is how we, we utilize our, our inner world and we're able to interact, um, outside of what we are picking up with our physical, um, with our physical senses, our physical senses have a value and then we have our higher senses. And so imagination plays a very, very big part. And we can understand, like we look at all of the things which we have access to, um, as a human being and they correlate their tools is what we have. And they correlate to kind of like the density or the frequency in, in what they work with. So it's like our hands, our bodies are very, very physical. And so they work best on like the physical world. We can pick things up. We can move things. Um, uh, uh, breath or spoken word, you know, it's softer and we're able to influence on that on, on, on those planes with like something softer, we can, we can, we can influence each other or communicate to this mental and emotional plane just through breath and work and words, which, which are things like, you know, my words are something, but they're not like my hands. They can't fit. They can't pick anything up. So it's like, as you become more and more, um, uh, subtle, less and less dense with the field, which you're working with, you know, as you go from material to maybe mental, like our, our tools to interact with them become more and more subtle as well. And so right now, um, what we know is as it relates particularly to, to the 5g is there are these millimeter waves and you can't see them. You can't see them. And so all you can do is use your abstract mind and your imagination in order to uh, uh, interact with them, to envision them, to see them. And so what we know is that is the realm in which we are to work with them. And as we begin to use the energy work, whatever that may be, as you use your imagination, like that is part of as much as like the physical. So it's like the, you can do things to, um, reduce, uh, um, the effects of, of, of 5g, the physical stuff. Like, um, if it's in your house, if it's in your building, you know, you, there, there are paints, there are clothes, there are, there are all sorts of things we can do to reduce it. We can add trees, plants with inside our house, you know, that can reduce it. But, you know, at the end of the day, you, <laughs> you know, if it's being projected in your house, you got to also work on some other levels too. Um, 
And so this is a time where we begin to play with it. Um, so imagination, working with energy, you know, this is, these are some of the things which I do, but that's what I would certainly recommend. And I'm going to get into probably in future videos, talking about ways, which, which I, uh, which I work with it. Um, you know, I also, uh, just recently I started, I started doing Kundalini yoga. You know, I've been practicing yoga. I've been practicing like energy work, Qigong, martial arts, um, I'm a very physical person. I like my, I, you know, being in body, tried a lot of stuff and I've always had a little bit of, um, a little bit of, uh, apprehension towards, uh, or resistance towards Kundalini yoga. I didn't even know what it was. I've tried all sorts of different yogas. I never had any apprehension, but, but Kundalini I did. And I just started doing it. This, just this free thing on YouTube, this 40 day like thing on YouTube, um, 20 minutes in the morning and you know, I'm 48. I'm, I, my body has been changing and, you know, I, I picked up a lot of aches and pains about like 10 years ago and my body, I, I got it through, through, through movement. I was able to reduce my pain considerably. But the point I'm telling you about this is like, I got a pretty good, um, uh, understanding of how my body responds to different things and how I feel. And I just started doing this Kundalini yoga, which, which I just did o do on YouTube. And it's primarily about breath and, and kind of simple movements. And it, my body has responded better to this than anything else. And why I think this is important, particularly as it relates, as it relates to, um, uh, what we're seeing with the 5G. So much of this has to do with oxygen and oxygen uh, intake. And so a lot of breath work, I find the Kundalini as it's not just breath work, it's breath work with body work. And if you can apply the imagination as well, like you've got a full practice when you've got movement, you've got breath and you've got imagination. That's what a full practice is. And you can do that with Qigong as well, but work on a full practice. This is how you can, you can, you can do something pay attention, see how your body responds. Um, and I suppose that's the, uh, um, <laughs> that's, that's where I'm going to end this one. You know, that's a lot of information. Uh, I'll probably get into some more details, but, um, think wisely about how you want to go and also, um, share this information because, you know, again, don't take my word for it. Go and do research, use common sense, look around what seems to be happening. And if there's something better, you know, hold on to the best narrative until a better narrative comes around. Because part of this, we've, we're working with a lot of loose ends, but also appreciate that a lot of people are not ready to hear this stuff. You know, think about the, the pl Plato's cave allegory. People are in, your normal person is in fight or flight mode. You have to respect that and use that knowledge with your navigation of how you are going to work through this scenario. <laughs> uh, this is Mike. It's, um, it's 3-22-2020. And, um, <laughs> until the next one, you know, we're all walking on this one together. <laughs>